is Carrie Murray. For breakfast matters before the court for pretrial conference, same as being conducted via Zoom. I'm present uh, as attorney Stephen Rotenberg, representing the plaintiff, Ricky Janice. Mr. Janice, are you present on audio? Yes, Your Honor. All right, good morning, Mr. Janice. Is Carrie Murray present? No. It I don't appears think that so. she is not. The record to reflect this matter was scheduled for 9 a.m. It's now 9.15. Miss Murray has not appeared. She's not contacted the court. Mr. Romberg, has she contacted your office at all? No. I do. In fact, I defaulted her a couple days ago. Yes. Yep. Court's aware of that. Did Mr. Janice, have you heard from uh, your wife, Carrie, at all in the last week or so? No, Your Honor. All right. All right. The uh, court would note that the court file does reflect... An order was entered by this court on November 15, 2023, uh, which allowed for alternate service of the summons complaint for divorce upon Ms. Murray. The court allowed alternate service by posting in the courthouse electronic uh, email to Ms. the email address of uh, Ms. Janice, as well as to two different cell numbers. In addition, that a copy of the summons complaint be mailed as well as attached to the dwelling at one, two, seven, seven. A certificate of service signed by Attorney Rotenberg indicating that he did, in fact, serve upon Miss Murray, the alternate service. Uh, he posted at the courthouse. He uh, sent a copy uh, of the summons complaint for divorce to Miss Janice via email, as well as uh, texting it to different cell numbers, as well as mailing to last one address of 12700. Was that attached to the dwelling? Yeah, well, yes, it was. Yes, it was, Judge. Actually, it's ironic. When I was there, I had a go. I, I when I looked at the address because I drive up Plank and Custer all the time, going to uh, uh, Ann Arbor. I was going. I think this is near Sebra's Market, which is at Ostrander, and I think uh, uh, Plank. And it turned out it was right across the street. And I taped it to the. I went to the market to buy tape to tape it to the building. So yes. And I have a Is photo of it on my camera. Your certificate of service indicates you mailed it, but doesn't indicate you attached the copy. Oh, I did. I I, I thought I, I thought I said that I ta I, I tacked it. I can I have a photo of attacking it. If you need me to do an amended proof of service, I can do that. I that did would be great. It. Just so there's the, no issues down the road, Mister Robert. Yeah. If you just uh, amend that to indicate that, in addition to mailing, emailing, texting, you uh, and, and, uh, you also attach one to the dwelling. Did there appear to be? The home they appear to be occupied. The the house hard to tell. It's basically a bunch of uh, trailers that have been sort of like you know like single wides that have been sort of put together to make sort of like a horseshoe shaped building. And there's a bunch of cars outside of it, and they seem to change it up from time to time because I drive past there basically a couple times a week. But there were no lights on. I've never actually seen people coming in or out of it. But there's obviously some kind of activity. Go there's people living there, but I've never really seen people living. There. That makes sense. Right. Mr. Janice, when did you last have contact with Miss Murray? I, I, I recognize you separated in February of 2020, but when did you last have contact with her by phone or otherwise? Um, two years ago. Okay. Do you have any idea where she works? I have no idea where she works or where she is at. Do you have any mutual friends? Uh, not anymore. I used to. Okay. Have you reached out to talk to any of those mutual friends? In, in the past year? Uh, I talked to one of the mutual friends, and they don't even know where she's at. Okay. Mr. Rotenberg, did you at some point in time, I don't recall, did you obtain a post of verification from the post office that Ms. Samir was still receiving mail at that address? No, I did not receive a verification from them. I did do a, uh, I believe I did a skip trade, but I, haven't, I, don't, I don't know if I ever received it back. I don't think she's living there. Like, because I uh, this much I know when I drove past it a few days after after posting it in December, I think I posted it. It was it, it had been removed, but I don't know who removed it. All right. Okay. Hey, Vet. At this point in time, uh, uh, since Miss Murray has failed to appear for this pretrial conference. The mailing of the notice that the court mailed
for the December, the initial pretrial conference was returned as being undeliverable, but the second mailing of today's pretrial conference, uh, mailed to Ms. Murray at the address of 127 was not returned as, un as being undeliverable. So uh, obviously it was received at that address. Right. I also have something here that I, and I don't know what exactly what I mailed, but this was something I mailed in the 10th of October and return receipt and it was returned undeliverable as well. So, okay. so sometimes the post office can be a little spotty with, 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 with that, with that function. All right. So Mr. Robert, if you just make, simply make a note to just follow an amended, just a real short amended certificate of service that in addition to the service uh, effectuated by virtue of your certificate of, December, of January 15th, you also attached a copy of the summons complaint for divorce on the premises. Mm -hmm. I believe on December 8th, that would be uh, appropriate. And, uh, uh, and clearly, uh, uh, we'll take the proofs this morning, and then uh, you can. We'll give you a date to notice up for entry of proposed to default judgment divorce. Is that agreeable, Mr. Rotenberg? Yes. Right. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be great. Right. right, Mr. Janice. Thank you. All right, Mr. Rotenberg, you can please can proceed with taking the proofs. Okay, Mr. Janice, please. Mr. Janice, when you filed this complaint for divorce, um, were the were, were the facts true at the time that you you filed them? Yes. Are they still true today? Yeah. Um, have the have the bond, bonds of matrimony been destroyed? Yes. Is there hope for reconciliation? No. Um, to your knowledge, to your knowledge, is Ms. Murray pregnant? No. Um, you realize that because this is a default, this is not likely to go to trial. Do you realize, well, okay, the, this is going to be a little odd. The, the, it, had it gone to trial, you might get a different or result than you otherwise would have today. Okay. Okay. Um, with the, 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 uh, the uh, divorce judgment, would you, would you agree that basically every, both you and Ms. Murray, uh, keep what you have. You don't give anything, you know, um, and, and that there's not going to be any spousal support and um, there's no uh, pension issues here. I agree. Um, there's no children of this marriage? No. Uh, any other questions, Judge? No, the court satisfied, Mr. Rotenberg. Thank you. Uh, based upon the testimony of Mr. Janice this morning, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. Okay, well, one last question, Mr. Janice. Um, you've been separated since um, for almost four years now. Is that correct? Yes. And it's been a couple of years since you've had any contact with uh, Ms. Murray. Correct. Right. Again, based upon the testimony that's been presented, the court satisfied that the jurisdiction has been established. And that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the option of matrimony has been destroyed, but there appears to be no reasonable chance that the marriage can be preserved. At this point in time, the court reserve all standing issues in order that the uh, matter be continued for a motion hearing to enter a default judgment. Mr. Oldberg, are you available on February 14th at 10 a.m.? And you and Mr. Janice, will that date work for you? Hang on, let me take a look. Let you know. Oops. February 14th at, yeah, Valentine's Day. At what time would you like me, Judge? 10 a.m. In person or by Zoom? By Zoom. Okay. So, will that give you enough time to prepare the proposed the default judgment and get that mailed out to Miss um, Janice? Should, it should be. That, that's, that gives me about three weeks, yeah. You want more time? Uh, you know what? Give me one more week. Okay. If you can. Okay, so... 21st at 10. How about the 21st of February at 10 a.m.? You got it. I think. Yep. Hold it. Uh, yeah, you got it. Right. The court will, in addition, mail out another notice that parties appear for a continued pre-trial conference or a final pre-trial conference February 21st at 10 a.m., and the court and would ask want, that Mr. Oldberg, 
Notice up for entry, a proposed default judgment divorce. So we will need, of course, the proposed judgment, uh, a copy of your certificate of mailing, and perhaps we in safe side, uh, we can send a copy of that to Miss Murray. Um, I don't, know if, I don't know how easy it is to send documents like that on a cell phone. What do you do? Uh, basically, do I just take it. It took me a while to figure out how to do it. Basically, I just take pictures of them and run it through. So you want it or cell phone? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Certainly by mailing it and certainly the email address. Um, mail it to okay. the Elstrander Road and do the email address. That's that's relatively easy. I'll leave it to you whether or not you want to uh, also text it to the uh, phone numbers. Okay. Do you want me to tack it as well or no? No, it's not necessary. Nope. But again, okay. you, since, already, since you said you tacked a copy of someone's complaint to the door, if you can just simply uh, file an amended certificate of service that in addition to what you did on December 8th and for the certificate of January 15th, you also attach it to the dwelling that would make, yeah. uh, that would cover every base. Okay. Yeah, this is, right. So we'll see, this one back those... Mr. Janice. We'll, we'll see you back to Mr. Janice to uh, end this judgment. Hopefully if, if Ms. Murray does not appear, the court will get you divorced on February 21st, 10 a.m. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Right, see you, see you soon, Ricky. I'm going to need to meet up with you so you can sign off on this, okay? Okay. Okay. You take care, Judge. Um, Drive safe. We don't have an agreement yet. And so it right. makes more sense to adjourn in a month and then we'll come back with an agreement. Judge wants you to meet my friend. That's fine. That's fine. Let's give you in a breakout room. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, I can meet. I can probably meet with them. Uh, the one that I was meeting with, the ten o'clock. Yeah. Just to let you know, uh, defendant is going to be asking for more time to get an attorney, and I believe Matt Vitito is going to be requesting that the default go through. Okay. Well, okay. Um, so they're ready to go in front of judge. You can bring them out, and I will put in uh, uh, in room two, Mr. Mills and Miss Mills and Mr. Reese. Okay. The record is now before the court. We place this motion for entry of a default to judgment of divorce. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President is Attorney Matthew Vitito representing the plaintiff. Patrick Henderson, Mr. Henderson is present. And ma'am, you are Diana Henderson, is that correct? Miss Henderson, are you Diana yes. Henderson? Yes. Okay, what, uh, can you please state your name and current address for the record? I do not want to state my address in front of Mr. Henderson. Okay. I, wh how, where does the court mail notices to you at? We just want to know, uh, obviously, there was a default entered. Uh, right. And I've never served. You want my current address? Where I'm sitting at the time. Just a, just a mailing address. Where can you receive mail? If you don't want to, you don't address, that's receive fine. Mail. Where can receive you receive mail? mail okay, we've got the wrong zip code here. we got a, a zip code of 48403. That's incorrect. That is incorrect. Okay, Mr. Bailey, make a note that you're at the mailing address. Yes, Your Honor. But I do want to make yeah. sure that the uh, court understands is that Ms. Henderson did receive the motion. She has it with her. She indicated to um, Mr. Walker uh, during our uh, meeting that she had received it. No, okay. I, I received the default paperwork. I did not receive whatever comes in the beginning of a divorce. Never seen any papers, never received any papers. Okay, Ms. Henderson, if that were the case, then how were you able to say what was in the judgment when we were in uh, the meeting with Mr. Walker if you didn't receive it? With, with the motion of entry of judgment of divorce. That's what I received. Did you receive attached to that, Ms. Henderson, a proposed judgment of divorce? What I... I just... I was never served any papers. I received this paperwork that they were going over with that other gentleman and that's all I received. Okay. Well, but part of that, do you look at exhibit C, there's a, a document. It's uh, seven pages that says judgment of divorce. Yes, I have that. Okay. All but right. I so that's, that was the question. Up. Hold on, Miss Henderson. Sorry. Of course, staff, I received the post judgment of divorce, but you're asking that uh, you want to hire an attorney. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Why don't you do that before today? Be Why didn't I do that before today? I did not have the time to do that before today. Okay, well, Ms. Henderson, you're creating unnecessary expense for Mr. Henderson, and you're wasting the court's time by having everyone appear this morning at the 11th hour requesting an attorney. But, Your That's Honor, why the court's asking Your that. Honor, legally, I should be served papers. 
legally we're supposed to be residents of Michigan for six months before you can file. We were residents of Kansas in April. So there was no okay. way on September, whatever the date it says he filed this, that we lived here for six months. Okay, well, you can you can hire a lawyer to test jurisdiction. Yes, the court needs uh, Mr. Henderson has filed a complaint and he'll have to testify ultimately that he did reside in Monroe County for at least 10 days, stay Michigan at least six months prior to filing. You understand he needs to only live in Monroe County for 10 days and stay in Michigan six months. You're saying he did not live in the state of Michigan six months prior to September 7th? Nope. All right, Mr. Vendo, your client will be able to testify to that ultimately. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, and we're going to be asking the court for uh, fees and costs for her, you know, wasting our time. Uh, right. I, I'm not wasting anyone's time. I think the burden of proof is on her to set aside the default. And she's got to establish that. I just want to make sure that the court knows that that's she's going to have to file that motion or that the, the court makes sure she's going to have to file that motion. Uh, right. Yes. Um, the court will reserve your request for, for costs, uh, Mr. Bendo. Obviously, the court's please, Ms. Henderson, appeared this morning and gave an opportunity to hire an attorney. This is a real short term marriage. Uh, the three years have been separated since January of 23, you've been separated a year now. We is that correct, Ms. Henderson? No, we were living together until March. We weren't separated until March. Um, all right, all right, March. I, okay, I'll just mark March of 2023. Um, from your standpoint, Ms. Henderson, what are the issues? Do you have a real estate that needs to be divided? No, um, sir. Bank account. He's not talking to you. A bank account. Um, there's something else in here that says I have a storage unit in Wichita, which I never had. Um, I took all my stuff with me when I left. Let's see. I'm looking over this really quick to see if there's anything else. Um, I have medical bills because of Mr. Henderson. I was supposed to receive um, veterans, um, some kind of veterans insurance that would pay those. Um, I have not heard anything on that. Um, student loans because of him. I have balance outstanding of over $2,000. Um, well, Ms. Henderson, uh, you want, you're asking for a time to contact retained attorney. Is that correct? Correct. All right. How much time do you need? Well, I am having surgery next week that I had to postpone to come to this hearing. Well, you, you're not coming to hearing. You're appearing by Zoom. So even if surgery, you can appear via Zoom from your hospital bed if necessary. Um, I don't know what kind of surgery it is. Do that with major neck surgery where they're cutting out part of my bone, my whole neck, down to my back. Okay. Well, I wish you the best on that. And Mr. Um, so what the court's going to do, the court's going to uh, order a, a mediation date with the front of the court and find a continued pretrial conference. Mr. Bindo, I'll reserve your request for costs. This will give Ms. Henderson some time to retain an attorney. So Ms. Henderson, I'm going to send a mediation date with the front of the court, and you need to appear with or without an attorney. If you don't appear, the court's going to enter the default judgment at that time. Okay. So you need to timely request an attorney. You need Judge. to file a motion to set aside the default. Okay. Mr. Bindo, from your standpoint, what do you see as being the issues? Uh, I'm sure the issue. there's some personal property that needs to be divided. Um, that she's expressed disagreement with when we were in the, the meeting with Mr. Walker. Uh, but that's really it. Um, there's no real property. Uh, there's really no pension. Uh, Mr. Uh, Henderson receives uh, VA disability benefits, but those are things that he accrued well before he was ever married to Ms. Henderson. Um, he didn't receive those. So the, um, Hold on, Ms. Henderson. Ms. Henderson, please don't interrupt. Okay, I'm sorry. So those are really the only issues, personal property to some vehicles. Uh, she's alleged there's some hidden bank account. That's not true, but, uh, you know, she's alleged that. Uh, but it's really aside from the division of, of personal property, there really isn't anything. Okay. Any joint debts that need to be addressed? Or just debts in there is that, um, Well, there is the issue of a debt for the storage unit. Um, my client, uh, when they were living together in Kansas, had to flee from there. He fled to, to Michigan. Uh, he's got a PPO against her, which is still valid here in the state of Michigan. And so the he had to, to leave certain things in that storage compartment, uh, which uh, kept accruing. She stored her stuff in that uh, compartment, and there were fees associated with that, that that would be considered a joint debt, which would need to be uh, decided by the court. Excuse me, okay. Your Honor. Your Honor, okay, can, I miss, speak? can I speak? This is not the time, Ms. Henderson. We're going to have you, your attorney can speak on your behalf. I'm just trying to I understand what the issues are. Regarding what he just said, why can't I speak? We, this is not a trial, Ms. Henderson. You can, I'm just trying to get some idea of what the issues are. Mr. Vindo is suggesting that there's a debt for storage oh. that needs to be addressed in personal private division. And you no, there's not are, a what storage unit debt. Ms. Henderson, not, I'm going to mute you if you don't stop talking over the court. Um, Ms. Henderson, this is not, this is not a trial. It's a free trial. I'm, I'm trying to just get some idea of what's at issue. I've got some idea. You may believe there's more issues, but you can talk to an attorney. At this point in time, I'm going to adjourn this matter so you can retain an attorney to address these issues. Um, your Honor, I would ask what a mediation date you're going to set if you would make that uh, some date prior to that a motion filing deadline for uh, her new counsel to file the motion to set aside the default. 
Um, and assuming that it's not in the file by the deadline, that would certainly make things uh, easier to determine once we uh, uh, appear for the mediation. Correct, Mr. Bader, I assume any attorneys can appear at mediation, they will know the filing a motion for, uh, to set aside the defaults and presumably agree to set aside the default and maybe conditions, but uh, I'm events, not agreeing uh, to it, um, Your Honor, um, but I, I just don't want to get in a position where she's playing games like she has thus far, where she appears for that date, uh, you know, and then says that she needs to hire more counsel or that she, you know, that she still needs to get file that motion to set aside my client in September. And due to her playing games with service, we were able to get her served until December. Um, and so I just want to avoid that scenario where she keeps on, uh, you know, delaying this even further. Excuse me, Your Honor. Can I say something really quick? Um, Go ahead. The exhibit number A, where it serves I was ser or shows I was served. I was living at my daughter's house at that time because she had to have her spinal cord unattached from her body. Um, so I was helping her with her five children. So I was not trying to uh, play games. I want this divorce. I had no idea where Mr. Henderson was. I thought he was still in Kansas. I just do not agree with some of the stuff that's in here. Well, obviously, but you're here today, Mr. Henderson, you're aware of these proceedings. So that's a sufficient notice. So I will, I'm going to mail you a pretrial statement. I'm going to order that you file a motion to set aside the default. Either you or your attorney file a motion to set aside the default. Honor before February 16th. So it gives you a good uh, three weeks, Ms. Henderson, to either to file yourself or have a lawyer, a lawyer file a motion to set aside default. Did it, the, my address to get switched, right? The zip code. Correct. This will be mailed to you at 3 Okay. Um, and uh, with respect to mediation, and the court's going to order that you appear for mediation with or without an attorney, Ms. Henderson. Okay. And you need to file the motion for entry to, to set aside default prior there, too. This mediation is not binding, but it's an effort to get the two parties to reach your own agreement. And if the parties don't reach your own agreement at that time, the court will schedule a quick trial date. Uh, okay. Obviously, Ms. Henderson, the reality is if, if in fact, you've been separated for Nine months now, uh, Mr. Henderson wants a divorce. Just uh, I want a divorce. Trust me. Okay. Well, we're doing these issues together. It's pretty short to marriage, pretty simple matter. There's no issues of custody or parenting time. Um, Your Honor, I have no discrepancies in mediation. I agree. To all right, all right Mr. Yes. Henderson, hold on. We can let your talk, train talk on your behalf. Mr. Okay. Biddle, we got some. Um, how about the uh, are you available on the 29th of February? We got either 8 30 or 1 30 with Mr. Walker. Uh, let me pull that up real quick, Your Honor. Ms. So Ms. Henderson, what's your surgery schedule? It is scheduled next Thursday, but I'm not going to be able to drive for six weeks. You don't need to drive. You just need to okay, try the computer and zoom in. Zoom. I just want to make sure it was going to be on Zoom. Yes, it'll be okay. Zoom. Okay. Your Honor, the 29th at what time? Either 8.30 or one thirty. I could do 8.30. Okay. Um, Ms. Henderson, uh, uh, February 29th, that is a Thursday at 8.30. Any reason why you cannot appear for a Zoom mediation at that time? Not that I'm aware of. All right. The court will mail you notice your order to appear. If you don't appear for the mediation on uh, February 29th, and uh, there'll be a preacher immediately following that. It'll be by Zoom. I'll send you the, the name of the mediator and the Zoom instructions. And after that's done, you appear before the court for a preacher off. Um, you need to contact, contact attorney prior there too and file a motion outside the fall a couple weeks before that, maybe on February 16th. So, um, again, even if you don't hear the attorney, at least consult with an attorney, we need to file this motion outside outside the fall. Okay. Your Honor, I have a question. Ms. Medical, please. Is the is the mediation with Mr. Walker? Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, Ms. Henderson, do you have any questions? No, I don't. And, and of course, in the meantime, you can always communicate with Mr. Vitado and uh, try to. Uh, he's given you the proposed judgment. Maybe there are some, and maybe a little tweaking of that would be sufficient. Um, so you received the most important paperwork, and that is the proposed judgment. That's what Mr. Henderson wants. And to say you disagree with some of those things, you can address that in the mediation. We need to file a motion to set aside default prior there, too. Okay. Anything further, Mr. Bindo? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Again, the court will reserve requests for, for costs. Let's just uh, try to get the party divorced. Um, looking at the judgment, it sort of puts everyone back in the same position they were prior to marriage, correct? That's what its intention uh, is, Mr. Honor. Uh, other than this, the, uh, a, uh, the storage unit debt. Very often, if the debt's not paid, the storage unit simply uh, liquidates and sells the personal property, and that eliminates the debt. 
Do you know is that, that, is that still occurring at that, that storage unit, Mr. Bello? I do not know that the answer to that. Sorry. Excuse me, Your Honor. Uh, I never left anything in Kansas. I took it all with me that I, on my personal property. So I had nothing to do with that storage unit. Is he the storage unit empty? We were married, or he did not own it when we were together. Is it empty? I don't know. I'm not in Kansas. Okay. Who, who rented the storage unit? He did. He must have because I didn't, and he, we right. didn't we were married unless it was hidden from me. Okay, so there's there's nothing in that storage unit that you want. Is that correct, Mr. Henderson? Correct. All right, so Mr. Henderson, maybe you can contact them, see if there's a debt, and just have them tell them, uh, authorize them to uh, maybe they'll keep everything and, and eliminate the debt. Maybe you can make that inquiry. Ms. Henderson said in she wants nothing from that storage unit. Yes, sir. So, so maybe that can be eliminated. If in fact, we verify there's no debt and they have uh, uh, wiped it quite clean with respect to you, whoever signed the contract for the, that rental unit. Um, Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vendor. That was this matter. We'll send everyone back then on uh, February 29th after the day for the mediation. Later. Before the court for a continued pretrial conference subsequent to mediation. Parties have been engaged in mediation for approximately 10 minutes. Um, obviously, someone is not uh, mediating in good faith. In any event, the hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The president is attorney Matthew Vendor representing the plaintiff, Patrick Henderson. And Mr. Henderson is present. Uh, the defendant, Diana Henderson, also is present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Okay, what the court's going to suggest is uh, this is, if I recall, it's a pretty short term marriage. Uh, Your Honor, may I say something, so, please? Yes, Ms. Henderson. Um, I had not one but two surgeries on my neck in the last month, less than a month. I'm on very heavy pain medication and do not think I am able to answer legal questions. And okay, agree to legal things at this time. Okay. I had another surgery due to a complication to the first surgery last week. Okay, obviously, the court has to move this matter along. Um, obviously, you could have talked with I Mr. go Vindo. back to the doctor tomorrow. I did talk to him about it. Mr. Henderson refuses to postpone the litigation. All right. Uh, what the court would propose this morning is that the court take the proofs. And to establish jurisdiction, there's been a breakdown of the marriage. There's no minor children. That Ms. Henderson is not present. The court will reserve outstanding issues. And what the court will do is then schedule a trial date. Okay. Yeah. Your Honor. If, in fact, the two parties feel that mediation is uh, will be futile, I'm not, I don't intend to waste the party's time. That's uh, fine. No I've... To that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I do object to that. Um, and I want to uh, spell out a timeline for the court. Uh, Ms. Henderson uh, what, what, was initially served in, in September by certified mail. No, uh, I was not. It was personally here. served. Um, no, I was and, not. Please Hold on, Ms. Henderson. Ms. Henderson, please do not interrupt, interrupt please. Okay, Ms. I'm, I'm aware that the default was entered. The court ordered to file a motion to set aside the default by February 16th. She's not done that, but she's here. So I can't just ignore her at this point in time. But, uh, Ms. Henderson, there are court rules you need to comply with. Okay. At least she's here. So the court's not inclined to just enter a default judgment this morning, Mr. Bitter, if that's what you're suggesting. Your Honor, she's just. Her her intent is to delay these proceedings and make a mock. The court will schedule a trial date today, Mr. Vindo. I beg your pardon? The court will schedule a trial date today. So we're going to move this matter forward so Mr. Henderson can get divorced. I want to be divorced from this man. All right, Mr. Mr. Henderson, will you both please yeah, raise yeah. your right hand? Uh, Mr. Vindo, do you want to take the proofs, Mr. Henderson? Do you want the court to do that? I'm sorry? Mr. Vindo, do you want the court to, to uh, secure proofs from Mr. Henderson, or do you want the court to do that? Uh, Your Honor, I can take proofs of Mr. Henderson. All right, please. Mr. Henderson, do you recall um, having me file a complaint for divorce in this case? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, and that was back in August of 2023? Yeah, it was back this summer, yes. Okay, and in that um, complaint for divorce, there were certain allegations that we made. Yes. Okay, and one of those allegations was that you had been a resident of the state of Michigan for the last 180 days. Yes. And you've been a uh, resident of the county of Monroe for the last uh, 10 days. Correct. Okay. You also allege in that complaint that there are no children born or adopted during the marriage. No, sir. You, you did not allege that, or are you saying there were no children? I'm sorry. Uh, there are no children. No, sir. Correct. You also allege that there has been a breakdown in the marital relationship such that the bonds of matrimony have been destroyed, right? Yes, sir. And you further allege that um, there remains no reasonable likelihood that those bonds can be uh, reestablished or repaired, right? No, sir. 
you did not? There's no way the marriage can be repaired at this point, sir. Okay. And you also alleged that there were certain um, assets that needed to be divided. Yes, sir. And you asked the court to grant the divorce. Those, is that a yes? I see your head nodding. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. And all those allegations, they were true at the time that that was filed, right? Yes. And they're still true to this day? Yes, they are. Okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions for Mr. Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Bendo. Uh, Ms. Henderson, can you please state your name and current mailing address for the court? Ms. Henderson, did you hear the testimony this morning of your husband, Patrick? Yes. Was his testimony true and accurate? No, it was not. Okay, what was not accurate about his testimony? There was no way in August he could have been a resident of Michigan for 180 days. I did not leave until April, and he left after I left. Well, Ms. Henderson, you need to file an answer. You never filed an answer to this matter? I so... never received that paperwork. I was never served, Your Honor. I was never personally served papers, nor did I receive a certified mail in August or September. I wasn't even living here. I was living at my daughter's where I go back and forth. Ms. Henderson, Your Honor. have you now received a copy of the, the, the complaint for divorce? No, I never did. Okay, I... come down to the courthouse today to get a copy. Ms. Henderson, this matter has been courthouse. pending for some time. Okay. Um, Your Honor, that's I what think... I was asking last time that we came in front of you about that, about not receiving it. And the, the court gave me instructions to file a motion to set aside the default. And if you can't, no, don't do that. You need to contact the attorney, Ms. Henderson. Okay. Okay, Ms. Henderson, uh, the uh, are you currently pregnant? No, I am not. All right. The, the court uh, uh, finds based on the testimony that's been presented. That jurisdiction has been established and that there has been a breakdown in the marriage relationship to the extent that the opposite match when you've been destroyed, there is no reasonable chance that the marriage can be preserved. The court will reserve all standing issues. Um, Ms. Henderson, you need to take some affirmative step yourself. Come down to the courthouse and get a copy. You can look for the whole the entire file. Okay. This is the first time I've heard that you have not received a, a copy of the uh, complaint. Mr. Henderson simply wants a divorce. That's it. I do, so do I, I but no. Trials. Hold on. There is only okay, a sorry. clear marriage. You were separated in March 2023. The only issue is division of personal property and some debt for a storage unit. Is that certainly the only issue? There's Mr. credit Bindo? card debt too. Okay. There's, uh, I think the storage unit debt has been resolved. We're not aware, and nor has my client alleged that there's any credit card debt. No. Okay. All right. So you need to present <laughs> that. Uh, you need to present that to Mr. Okay. Bendo ahead of time, Mr. Ms. Henderson. In any event, the court's going to, uh, Mr. Henderson is entitled to a timely trial, so the court's going to schedule us for trial. Uh, Mr. Vindo, Tell him that a, about the other two times you filed and had it pulled out. All right. You, uh, we're going we're gonna to give you trial dates. Uh, we have a date of uh, April 25th. Are you available, Mr. Vindo? April 25th. It's a Thursday. It'll be an in-person trial. Uh, Your Honor, pardon me one Mr. second. Henderson, check your schedule. April 25th. It's a Thursday. It will start at 8.30 in the morning. It'll be an in-person trial. Yes, I'm available. Okay. I'm available, Your Honor. All right. So we'll, we'll make a notice uh, the in-person trial, April 25, 2024, 8.30 a.m. That'll be in person. The center says they need to appear personally. Uh, and if you and Mr. You can always reach out to Mr. Dildo in the meantime. Maybe you can reach your own agreement. That's far better off. Otherwise, okay. the court make a final decision and they'll hear from both of you. And then uh, you won't have much input other than telling your story. Um, with respect to a trial brief, the court's going to require Ms. Henderson, um, uh, for example, if you suggest there's credit card issues, you need to provide that, Mr. Vindo, in advance. Otherwise, okay. the court will not listen to any testimony about that trial. Do you understand that? Yeah. There are certain court rules. You need to provide that in advance. And the court recognized that the court was still ordered to file an answer to this complaint. If you haven't gotten the complaint. That's fine. If I could get the paperwork, I'll answer it, sir. Your Honor. Well, when, um, okay, Ms. Your Henderson, Honor, can, hold on. Ms. Can Henderson, can we, can you appeared before this court back... Uh, January 26th, we scheduled this. And the court ordered you to file an motion to set aside default, but you didn't do anything. You didn't tell me you didn't have a copy of the complaint. Yes, I and did. That would, and that, sir, right. would be recent. Mr. Anderson, for Mr. Anderson, please. Yes. You can talk yes. to your, have your attorney talk on your back. Get an attorney. I'm sorry. It's not a I'm chance for Ms. Anderson to argue with each other. No, I'm not, sir. I'm, I brought right, it uh, to you that she didn't. No, nope. she didn't. Mr. Comply. Henderson, please. Can you meet Mr. Henderson, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Vitto, uh, the court's uh, suggesting that the court's going to set a time frame for each side to, to file a brief uh, trial brief, so the court knows Ed, Ed, what's that issue. And you're saying that the storage unit issue is no longer an issue, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. So from your client's perspective, what is the issue? Just division of personal property? Uh, that's right. It's division of personal property. They have no real property. Um, 
that that's really the issue. Okay. Uh, and uh, so there's property in Mr. Anderson's possession that Mr. Anderson desires. Well, there is a, um, a Cadillac um, CRV or uh, SR6. I have to look at the judge in one second. Um, okay. There's a Cadillac at issue. There is a Cadillac at issue um, in, in our um, proposed judgment that we were going to present that mediation today um, that we prepared in anticipation of negotiation today. Uh, we, moved, we changed some things on page four regarding the Cadillac, Cadillac. Initially, we were uh, asking for that to be awarded solely to my client. And in the proposed judgment, we're um, asking the court to sell that, uh, have the party sell that, and then um, split the proceeds. And we were providing for a specific mechanism for that to be done through Carvana. Apparently, they've expressed an interest in it. Uh, and the yeah, party for $5,000. Ms. Henderson, Ms. Henderson, Ms. Henderson um, do not interrupt Mr. Vitado. I'm sorry, sir. There's also a, um, so I'm sorry, you're suggesting that the Cadillac be sold and the proceeds split equally? That's right. Um, Who has possession of the Cadillac? Ms. Henderson. All right, Ms. Henderson, do you have any objection to that? Uh, yes, I do, sold? sir. It was bought okay. for me for my 50th birthday by Mr. Henderson. Mr. Henderson has three cars listed on there that he wants. One is a truck that doesn't run that he abandoned in front of okay. my son's house right, three years ago. Question. You answered the court's question. Yeah, you're opposed to it, so the court will address that uh, at the time of trial. So you need to provide, and Mr. Vitter, do you believe in what, 10 days before trial, for trial beef is sufficient? Yes, Your Honor, and I, I want to point something out. Um, Ms. Henderson came here today saying that she could not participate in mediation because she's on pain medication. She's not going to be able to understand what's going on, but clearly she understands what's going on. She's alert. She's uh, addressing each question that's raised or that she uh, think is being raised and provides uh, providing detailed uh, answers. So I, I don't see why, based on her uh, answers during the course of this hearing, how she cannot participate in, in mediation. I think it's just it's an noted. attempt for her to delay your, the process. Your yeah, Honor, that, I it, also... Let's Mr. Uh, okay, so Mr. Uh, Honor, Mr. Bindo, what are the other issues other than the Cadillac, from your client's standpoint? From my client's standpoint, there's just the, the issues of personal property. He has disability from the Army. She's not entitled to that. That accrued while he was in the service well before they were ever married. Uh, in fact, it accrued well before even Ms. Henderson was an adult. Um, so okay. uh, she's not <laughs> entitled to any of that. So really the only issue is the division of personal property. Okay, primarily the Cadillac? There's also a GM truck. It's an older model. I believe it's like 2000, maybe 2002. Uh, that's also in Ms. Henderson's possession, but um, my client is, uh, his position is uh, as of today, uh, that that should be awarded to um, to the defendant. But obviously, you know, that's all up in the air when it goes to trial. Okay, so they're pretty minor. All right, the court will order, Ms. Henderson, and I'm telling you right now, um, and, and what, what you say, there's outstanding there's joint credit card debt? Yes, there's credit card debt that was, he had me open in my name and okay. said, oh, let's charge him up, we'll okay, pay them off. And but it's not it's not joint debt. I asked you if there's any joint debt. And you said yes, that you opened in your what own you name. Is it, is yeah, they're all in my in name. Both names? No, there are not. Okay. And there's credit card debt in your name, and you, and you believe Mr. Anderson should pay some of that? Yes, I do. Okay, you need to present that in advance of trial. You don't provide all the documentation to Mr. Vitto, then they, uh, Mr. Vitto, you've actually submitted some interrogatories. And I don't know. And if, request uh, to a new judge. Okay, and if those are not in the address, and uh, I don't know if you've addressed that in those, if so, then it's not an issue. If Ms. Sanderson does not timely respond to those, they're deemed admitted. She has, she has, the deadline was uh, Monday, and she has not responded to those uh, whatsoever. And they address key issues, um, material okay. issues to this case, and she's not addressed those. So I think those okay. will be conceded at trial because she can't. Um, what are we the, talking about, sir? Excuse me. I don't even know Ms. what you're talking about. Ms. Henderson, uh, review the court file. I need to check your mail. The appear from the court file, you were that mailed requests for admissions and discovery requests. You had a term time frame which to respond to those, name within 28, 28 days. If you don't respond to those, those are deemed admitted. So you cannot, at trial, argue about credit card debt if you've not responded to these interrogatories. So you need to uh, you need to contact an attorney today. If you okay. can't handle this yourself, represent yourself properly, you need to get an attorney today because uh, this needs, if you don't timely respond to these interrogatories, they're deemed admitted. There's no discussion about the issue at trial. That's how it works. Okay. I see you seem to be very lucid, uh, just for the record this morning, very capable. You know about the different vehicles said, and so forth. But yes, of course, I know that's the doubt. 
You cannot engage in mediation. You're unwilling to engage in mediation for whatever reason. That's fine. I'm not going to waste everyone's time. We've got another mediation. We'll simply schedule us for trial April 25, 2024, 8 30 a.m. in person. Uh, there will not be Zoom, but in person, Ms. Anderson. And they need to file a trial brief with the court laying out the issues at least 10 days prior. Copy to the court and a copy to Mr. Bindo. And then this is your this, honor. Uh, that will be referenced in the show that I forgot to mention. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, the other issue that will be obviously is attorney's fees for. Um, and costs for uh, the delay that's being caused by Ms. Henderson. Obviously, a trial is going to be much more expensive for my client. We would not be needing that trial if she were willing to mediate in good faith or just conceded that she, in fact, was served and, and, and defaulted properly. I was never served. Um, and so my client's going to incur all those extra uh, fees, attorney's fees and costs because of her uh, poor behavior. All right. Uh, have you said to Ms. Henderson this proposed judgment, Mr. Vendo? We just prepared uh, it this week. I have not sent it to her. We were going to talk about it at mediation. Uh, literally, we, we had uh, completed it this week, uh, hoping to extend the olive branch at mediation and get this resolved. Uh, but uh, from what I understand, um, she hasn't even bothered to um, let uh, Mr. Walker go over that with her because she didn't want to participate in mediation today. Okay. Well, what the court suggests, Mr. Vindo, is maybe send that proposed judgment to Ms. Henderson, let her review it. Maybe that'll give her some uh, time to reflect upon it, and maybe that might facilitate a resolution. You spelled out the terms that uh, you're suggesting, that the Cadillac be uh, be sold, that she be awarded the pickup truck. Uh, so, Ms. Henderson, uh, uh, the court would suggest, uh, you know, take a look at this judgment, and if you have some modifications, you can always communicate with Mr. Vindo, uh, email or whatever. Um would you be willing to, to uh, mail her that proposed judgment, Mr. Vindo, just for get her, her something to review? And then she can be even review with an attorney if she wishes. Yes, Your Honor. And we'll send it certified because she uh, keeps claiming that she's not getting any of the paperwork, which is ridiculous. I did not get served. That is the only paperwork right. I have not right. received. But this, uh, I hate to see you incur the expense of certified mail, Mr. Vindo. It's not necessary, but I'll leave it to you. Ms. Sanderson, it's staying on the record. Your address My mailing you. address, yes. Okay. And uh, you need to check your mail, Ms. Sanderson. So Mr. Vito is going to send you this proposed judgment of divorce. Uh, if okay, you didn't look at, and I the court strongly suggest you read it carefully. Um, and I wouldn't discuss it today, but uh, review with an attorney. Okay. All right. Anything further this morning, Mr. Vito? I know it's frustrating, but uh, we'll, we've got a trial date set, and it'll be a firm trial date, uh, the April 25. Uh, and just to be clear, Your Honor, um, the trial brief is due 10 days prior, so by uh, April 15th, 2024, it should be served on the other party, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Ms. Henderson, do you have any other questions? No, I don't. All right. Put this in your calendar. The court will not adjourn this. So uh, hopefully that uh, some of your medical issues you will have addressed. Uh, so uh, be prepared to proceed to trial on this date. And the court was strong to suggest take a copy of his judgment to an attorney, pay consultation fee. It's going to save you a lot of grief and stress down the road. And that attorney can, uh, can you can tell the attorney, okay, I've got these credit cards. He made me take them out in my name and da, 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 whatever your position is at. View with the attorney and see what the attorney thinks. He may okay. say you're, you're climbing up the wrong tree. And he may say you want to, this is probably a very reasonable proposal here that Mr. Henderson has presented to his attorney. And maybe you can agree upon that and we can eliminate this trial. Okay. So keep an open mind. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vendo. Mr. Sanderson, that will conclude this matter. You can all zoom out. We'll see you on April 25th. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Welcome. For the record, uh, this matter is before the court. The possible contempt proceedings relative to Troy Bradburn, who is present. Personally present with his corporate attorney, Timothy Lair, this morning, also appearing on the Polly Commons and Monroe County Court Attorney, Rebecca Hicks, as well as the plaintiff, uh, Mother Christian Card. Good morning, everyone. Your Honor, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Courts, please. That Ms. Radbird has provided the court with a copy of the receipt showing they did pay one thousand dollars toward his child support arrearages this morning. And you're aware of that, uh, Ms. Nix? Uh, yes, I am, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Lady, I did not opportunity to discuss these proceedings with Mr. Bradburn this morning. Your Honor, I had also yesterday, I had a chance to talk to Ms. Hicks. I've been informed of the amounts of arrearage. Uh, Ms. Hicks did have a uh, plea agreement of sorts. I would let her put that on the record, of course. Uh, as the court noted, my plan did pay the $1,000 bond fee. Ms. Hicks? Uh... Um, Your Honor, in light of Mr. Bradburn making that payment, the friend of the court is just looking for a finding of contempt, but not asking for any immediate jail. I'm noting that obviously he would have those 45 days hanging over his head and do an adjournment um, to monitor that he can make consistent monthly payments. 
Um, also give him the opportunity if he is going to to file a motion to modify this support as he had indicated that he might um, do that when we were last in court a couple of days ago. Uh, Dennis, one day on your right. I got here early and did all that this morning. One so I don't have the $60 for the fee, obviously. Okay. I was planning on coming to jail this morning, 100%. My brother, at the very last minute, 20 minutes down the road, I guess, had a change of heart. And Wonderful. That's that's what family's for. So I'm glad Mr. Backroom because uh, you, you, know, you you actually hold key jail. You can avoid any, any jail in the future uh, if you simply will keep contact with front of court. If you get injured, contact in front of the court. We're there to work with you. But when you ignore things, that's when the problems you have. And that's what he that's right. beat into me this morning was I need to stop sitting on my feet just like you did yesterday. Okay. All right, good. Well, I'm glad you're here this morning, Mr. Backroom. Do you, there was a, you came from a distance, didn't you? And yes, sir. It was I, actually my brother came and picked me up yesterday to where I can be down here this morning. Okay, All right. Well, I appreciate you being here. Uh, so the court would be inclined to follow the recommendation of uh, Miss Six, namely that if you admit to contempt this morning, Mr. Brack, Brackburn, the court would uh, impose a sentence, but would suspend the sentence. The hang over had the new. You would control any access to that the 45 days. You would avoid I, it if you simply work with front of the court. Understand. I understand. First of all, are you satisfied you received your right to legal counsel by conferring with Mr. Lader this morning? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. I You're welcome. Thank you. And is it correct that you wish to admit to contempt? Yes. All right, raise Mr. Brandberg, the admit and acknowledge that you are obligated pursuant to order of this court to pay child support for the support maintenance of children born to you in Christian card. Yes, sir. You admit and acknowledge you of outstanding arrearages in excess of four thousand dollars. Yes, sir. And you admit you've not made any payments since entry of a support order back in July of twenty twenty three. Yes, sir. Have you had any had, had any income since July of twenty twenty three? I literally just started work, so my first day was technically in December and just before Christmas, and then we had a job that got. I don't know. It fell through. And then I went back to work this week. Monday actually was my day back to work. And now I'm in this course. So I don't know if I'm going to have a job when I come back. Okay. Because I have you, really plan on going to jail today. Understood. Have you had any income since July of 2023? No. Other. Are you, are you disabled? Uh, I have health issues. Yes. But well, I have anything that's can, do you have any physical condition that prevents you from getting a job? Yes. I can only work at certain places. I've got 14 screws in a plate in my shoulder and eight screws in a mm -hmm. plate in my ankle. I can't really do much physical. physical. Okay. That's, and hopefully I get my CDL back okay. in March to where I can catch up and right. do everything I'm supposed to be able to do. And at one point in time, you were driving a truck for a living, but I you got a drunk driving conviction that results in some impairment of your driving privileges, correct? Yes, sir. But there are, you, you acknowledge you, there's other jobs you're capable of doing, whether it's a clerk at a gas station. Uh, I have applied, sir, I have, okay. and I have felonies, so it's hard to... Okay. I, I, well, the front of the court is a four-page list. You can pick that up uh, when you uh, downstairs on your way out, and it lists a uh, uh, number of employment opportunities in the southeastern Michigan, and they're good-paying jobs, and even people with felony convictions. I live in northern Michigan, so there's not much out there. there. Okay. I locked it for 10. Okay. should be locked. Can you back in and lock that, please? But yes, I still have my job when I get back. Okay. I mean, you just can't be choosing about your jobs. But, uh, Mr. Lawyer, do you have any questions, Mr. Blackburn? No, Your Honor. Again, uh, and as always, we thank Ms. Six for the court. Right. Ms. Six, do you have any questions, Mr. Bradburn? I don't have any additional questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Right. Mr. Bradburn, if you have the job, you need to apply for employment or disability or something. You got to make support payments uh, yes, and or file a motion to reduce your support. Right now, it's taking long. It's six hundred thirty-eight dollars a month. Yeah, I know. Um, I did that this morning. Okay, good. Um, you got the packet. I didn't have the fee. Okay. The sooner you get that filed, the sooner you get the reduction because it was retroactive to the date you filed your petition. So you try to even if your brother give you six hours today. If you can get that possibly filed, if not, you can um, you can mail it in. I filed for the. To be set up here, is there any way I can get the fee waived? I, I literally don't. You're able bodied. You're able bodied, sir. This court's not going to waive it. And okay. the clerk won't waive the electric and public assistance. Okay. Um, all right. Anything further before the court follows the recommendation, Mr. Later? No, nothing further. All right. Uh, court finds this case a court order exists. And Mr. Um, Bradburn is aware of that court order, he has uh, failed to comply with that order, uh, resulting in rear in excess of $4,500. 
Um, had Mr. Bradburn exercised due diligence, he would have uh, made arrangements to reduce his support obligation, uh, prepared for review dates, paid something towards support, and he's, since he's done nothing, the court finds, uh, based on all that, uh, there is a basis for contempt. This court will qualify Mr. Brad Bradburn in contempt of court for pay child support. And Ms. Card, do you have any questions for, uh, for the court before the court follows the recommendation? No. All right. Um, Ms. Six, what do you suggest for a re review date for Mr. Bradburn? Um, March 26th at 10 a.m. 26th? Yes, Your Honor, 26. All right, good. All right, Mr. Lev, you do not need to appear on that date. Thank you for your assistance this morning. Um, Mr. Bradburn, the sentence of the court is ordered to have been found in contempt order to serve 45 days in Monk County Jail, but that's suspended. Um, you are ordered to uh, appear before Ms. Six. You can appear via Zoom, March 26 at 10 a.m. And uh, copies will be mailed to you at your, the address in Manton, Michigan. Uh, Obviously, you've got to uh, hopefully get that job back driving. Uh, yes. uh, if not, you've got to get something. You go from $100,000 a year to no income, you lose everything. Okay. But reach out in front of the court if you if you uh, you know uh, let them know what's going on and appear for the review dates. As long as you're making a, a reasonable effort, we'll work with you. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, good. Uh, anything further, Mr. Leiter? No, nothing further. Anything further, Ms. Six? Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. March 26, 10 a.m., and uh, you get Zoom instructions. All right, Mr. Bradburn, glad you were able to come up. Well, thank you, brother, for helping you out. That's huge. I installed three toilets last night for that thousand dollars. All right, you're good to go. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Judge. Welcome. Court is now in session, calling the two cases: Helena Brock versus Brandon Mason and Jacqueline Miller versus Brandon Mason. Thank you, Brandon Mason. Uh, the record, Mr. Brandon, is a, uh, Mason is appearing personally as directed by this court for contempt proceedings. Uh, also present on Zoom is a American Friendly Court Attorney Rebecca Hicks. Mr. Mason, did you pay $300 this morning? Um, just about paid because I, I forgot how she told me to split the payments. Did you pay $300 this morning? Not all the way through, but I have more money. Okay, 185 50 and 15 is my three receipts. Okay. I was just is that $1,200? No, Your Honor. He paid $250 total this morning. Okay. Okay. Can you have the other $50? Yes. Go pay it. Go pay it and come back up here. Oh. I directed you to pay $300 today. I, I didn't know which case to put it on because I'm. Talk with Miss Six. Miss Six, I'm going to send it back down. Oh, my. Which one do I owe? Because I. Go down to talk with Miss Six down in front of the court. Okay. We're going to send him down, and he just wants to know what case this should be applied to, Ms. Six. So if someone can meet him at the, at the counter, then come exactly. back up after you're done. Go through the side door, sir. Side door. Side door here. Right here. Yep. If you can pay more than $50. That'll That's be all right. Okay. All right. Not sure why Mr. Mason didn't pay the full 300 He's coming back down. Mason and Jacqueline Miller versus Brandon Mason. For the record, Mr. Brandon Mason has reappeared. Uh, have he paid an additional fifty dollars? So he's paid a total of three hundred dollars this morning toward his uh, child support arrearages. Is that correct, to Miss Six? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. In light of that, uh, Mr. Mason has appeared. At first, has directed and paid three hundred dollars as suggested by the court. What uh, action are you requesting that the court take this morning, Miss Six? Um, Your Honor, because he did appear in person and make the payment as ordered, the friend of the court um, is requesting that we just adjourn to monitor, and I'm not asking for sentencing today on his finding of contempt. Okay. He's got 45 days to over that. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. So, uh, right, Mr. Mason, uh, because of the fact that you've required this morning, so the court's going to adjourn some for review. And obviously, what you want to do is you want to keep this from being elevated before this court. So, we're going to put you back, uh, we're putting back before Ms. Sykes for review. Um, you got to make consistent payments. If, in fact, you're off work or injured, you file a motion to reduce your support. In the front of the court, you got a caseworker. A caseworker is there to help you. So keep in contact with front of the court. Um, do you have an updated address for Mr. Mason? I believe the address that we have is the correct address for him, Your Honor. Yeah, we got his valid address. What do you suggest for an adjourned date, Ms. Six? March 12th at 1 p.m., Your Honor. And Mr. Mason can appear via Zoom, is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. All right, uh, Mr. Mason, uh, you're to appear before Ms. Hicks for review March 12th at 1 p.m. We mailed copies notice with her Zoom ID number. Um, just keep in contact with the front of the court. Be proactive. 
Okay. Uh, I do not recall if Mr. Mississippi currently played yet or any other right. place. All right. Did you get that list of employment opportunities? I didn't grab it yet because I was on a frantic trying to pay and I didn't grab it yet. I'm writing okay. my own down because I got to talk to my caseworker about the other case because I don't understand it. Oh, that's right. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, yeah. Is that job list that's available at the front window? Is that correct? That is Ms. correct, Grayson John. We have it down here. So if he comes down and comes to the front window, we can give that to him and um, then reach out to his caseworker to see if they are available to meet with him. Okay. I'm going to do it temporarily because I'm going to the post office on my march. I just, I, I yeah, you yeah, get something in the meantime. And uh, again, welcome, you know. Um, okay, get that job list down there and meet with the caseworker. Okay, Mr. Any questions, sir? No. Okay, you're good to go. Right. Thank you. Is now session, Tara Thornton versus Ryan Rickard. For the record, this matter before the court for a pre-trial conference, the same is being conducted via Zoom. It appears that both parties are present. You are Tara Thornton, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And sir, you are Ryan Ritholler? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and see, it's good that you both appeared today, otherwise probably dismiss the matter because there's no proof of service in the court file. Uh, Ms. Uh, and Ms. Thornton, as a plaintiff, you have the obligation to serve Mr. Ryan with a copy of your complaint for paternity. And then he's got a chance to file an answer, but he's never done so. Um, uh, Ms. Thornton, your current address is somewhere, is that correct? Um, I recently moved. I will need to update that with the court. Okay, um, you need to uh, do that with the court. We also need to come to the front of the court and fill out a form. So what is okay. your current mailing address? Is still valid? Two, two. No, it is actually not. I did just get evicted about a week ago. Um, okay. What's your new address? So I've been using my brother's. My bro I don't have an address per se. I've been kind of just going where I can for now. Um, but address where you receive mail. Yeah, so I've been using my brother's address, which is three two. You both need to uh, come to the front of the court and fill out a form, so that the front of the court has an, an, an ad mailing address on file for you. And if you change it, you need to keep the front of the court form. It's like Secretary of State, you need to keep the front of the court form. Any change of address. Um, obviously, there's no attorneys involved. The court has an obligation to move this matter along. It was filed back in October. The court scheduled a pre-trial because neither of you are moving the matter forward. So the court wants to get an order entered today. I understand you're going to meet with Mr. Walker sometime in March, but I can't wait till March. We can schedule mediation in March, but I want to get a temporary order entered. Um, Mr. Walker, is there any past practice in terms of parenting time or custody? Yes, uh, Your Honor, I actually have a temporary uh, order in your queue right now with the parties. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Let me access that. Record the parties have confirmed with Mr. Walker from the front of the court this afternoon. Mr. Walker has provided the court with a fine recommendation, which if the court adopts them, come in order of the court. Uh, the recommendation is the parties on a temporary basis shall share joint legal custody. That means the two of you share equal in any major surgery concerning the welfare of your two-year-old child, like elective surgery, education, religion. Um, and further that, in the until further order, the father's parenting time should be reasonable and liberal, as the two of you agree. If there are no specific parenting time. You can always, uh, if there's issues, you can't communicate, then the court can always set a specific uh, parenting time schedule. Um, but that's recommendation this afternoon. And further, it's uh, noted that you're going to meet at Mr. Walker on March 7th at 1.30. Uh, no need to appear before this court, Mr. Walker. If they want to put some on the record, then the court will certainly be available. Just let us know. Um, Ms. Thornton, are you agreeable with this recommendation uh, on a temporary basis this afternoon? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Ritholler, are you agreeable with this recommendation on a temporary basis? Yes, I am, Your Honor. All right, uh, can you both raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you both solemnly swear affirm that the testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, stop of God? Thank yeah. you. Um, yes. Mr. Thornton, you have filed a complaint seeking an order of custody parent time relative to your minor child, Jade. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, the recommendation of Mr. Walker's afternoon that the two of you and uh, Mr. Ridhauer's father should join legal custody and a uh, reasonable level of parenting time. Do you believe that to be in the best interest of your daughter at this point in time? I do, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for the court? Not at this time, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Ridhauer, do you likewise believe this recommendation is in the best interest of your daughter? Yes, I do, Your Honor. At this point in time, do you have any questions for the court? Not at this time. All right. Um, uh, Ms. Thorne, are you still receiving public assistance? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Walker, are you still present? Yes, Your Honor. Um, were you able to capture their current mailing address, Mr. Walker, to mail them a copy of this order? Yes, sir. I was able to do that. I'm going to update. Uh, since it was on the record, I will update the front of the court records. And make Thank you. When the uh, immediate part of March 7th, will you also address the issue of child support, Mr. Walker? Yes, Your Honor, I will. Um, Ms. Thornton, apparently, is being public assistance, so presumably the minor child is a recipient of public assistance. Is that something you coordinate with the special prosecutor or the special prosecutor file their own uh, complaint for uh, support? Typically they do that on your on their own, but I can if I if we handle it, the special prosecutor will not have to deal with it. Okay. Um, can we do that? 
yeah, we can do that on March 7th if you would like. But have you received any notice to appear before any other representative in front of the court, either one of you, for child support? No, Your Honor. No. Okay. Well, if you do, you need to appear and let them know that you're going to meet with media with Mr. Walker on March 7th. Um, but obviously, uh, Mr. Uh, Grittow, you're, you're, you will ultimately be required to pay child support, and that child support will go to reimburse the taxpayers who are supporting your child. Does that always go to the to the mail, uh, given the situation? Or, I mean, how does that all work out as far as... It's, ba it's a formula based on your respective incomes. Okay. Um, so whoever makes more than the other? Correct. And who's got the most overnights? That's a... Some variant too. Presumably, the, the minor child is pretty young. The child is presumably spending most overnights with uh, mom. Is that correct? Currently, yes, Your Honor. Yeah. All right. You get those, those those things can change. Just take one step at a time. At this point in time, the uh, the court finds the agreement reached by the parties to be the best interest of the minor child. The court will adopt the agreement. Both of you mail the copy of this order. It'll have Mr. Walker's Zoom ID number. So you, at that time, you can talk about if you need to uh, modify parenting time, agree upon a specific schedule. Uh, if, in fact, uh, you cannot agree, the best schedule is one they agree to, reasonable liberal, if you can and communicate. Um, there's enough challenges in life. Communicate for your child's best interests. It'll make it good for each of you and uh, your daughter. So the court will strongly encourage that. You want your daughter to, to grow up and do well in life, a lot of spend on the two of you, and how uh, the two of you interact uh, with being her parents. All right, anything further, Mr. Walker? I think we've covered everything, and I appreciate your assistance in preparing this recommendation so this can stop the clock. I believe that covers everything today, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Walker. Unless you have any other questions, Mr. Thornton, Mr. Howard, will conclude this matter, and then make sure you appear for Mr. Walker on that date and time. All right, thank you very much. Honor. Before the court, we're looking at a pre conference, the same as being conducted via Zoom. Are you Nicole Owens? Yes, I am. All right, good afternoon, Ms. Owens. Is Michael Owens present? It appears that he is not. This um, matter was scheduled for three o'clock. It is now 3 uh, 15, 3 16. Mr. Owens has not appeared, he's not contacted the court. Um, your Honor, I did try to text him this morning. His mother had texted me. He had received his paper, or she had received the paperwork at the home that was his last known address. Um, but due to him having the warrants and the police showing up at that house, she has not seen him since um, right after Thanksgiving. Okay. And he has not answered my text. Okay. And uh, Pierce, I would also know if the court filed a default was entered by the clerk of the court. Back on December 29th, 2023, against Mr. Owens for failure to answer the divorce complaints. There is a copy of that the default was mailed by Ms. Owens to Mr. Owens at the North Custer Road address on December 29th. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes. You also mailed him a notice that you would be entering a proposed consent judgment or a consent. I'm sorry, that you'd be entering, asking to enter a default judgment of divorce before the court on today's day and time. Uh, but it does not appear that you mailed him a copy of the proposed default judgment. The one from two days ago, I hand delivered it to oh, his. To whom? Uh, uh, nobody answered the door this morning when I was on my way to work. I stopped by the his last known address, his mother's home on North Custer, and I stuck it in the door and took photos with date stamps. Okay, you need to follow the clerk of the court. We need some documentation that you and uh, and I don't know what that looks like, but you need to follow some with court that verifies that you did deliver. You attached to the. Uh, maybe a complete affidavit that you attached to the divorce or the proposed default judgment. Uh, you did that today, is that correct? Yes, this morning. I My vehicle oh. is down. I have no vehicle of my own, so I have to kind of get rides to and from work and things like that. So I wasn't able really to go and mail it. After I'd met at the court, I was already late back getting back to work. So, Well, the, the problem is you need to give him a, a sufficient notice. And Mr. Owens, you should have mailed this proposed judgment to him back on December 29th. It would be all I did. To divorce today. Wait a minute. The one on December 29th was mailed. You have copies of that mailing because I dropped those off two days ago. You, you said you delivered it today. No, I the revision one I did. I delivered the revision. The other one, you have the copies. I have it sitting right here. I gave her copies of both receipts that I certified paid $9 to send on December 23rd send it to him or okay. this i'm sorry the 30th 29 the, the, court, was. The, the court's in receipt of a proposed judgment you you've attached it that do you want michael's uh, boilermakers 85 annuity of twenty four thousand fifteen dollars did you deliver this judgment and the attachment to mr owens i delivered that judgment to him today or to his last known address today okay but you gotta get to him in advance i mean it should have been mailed on december 29th i just said that you said oh i did that but it was you already let him know. Hold on, hold on. 
Mr. Owens, uh, and I'm trying to help you through this. My staff has too. But if you can, you need to Europe's in yourself. If you can't do it, you need to hire another attorney. He needs to, if you're, if you're, if you want his annuity, you need to give him notice that, that, that you're asking for. Uh, I did that on 1229. Okay. Well, what did you tell him? The, the only reason that I had to come up there two days ago is because when I filled the notice of, or filled out the notice of default that you had told me that I needed to do the 29th. Um, I filled it all out on the 29th. I was there by three o'clock or after court, I was there. I left to work right away, okay. got up there, filled out the paperwork, got it up in there, took his copy and mailed it directly from the post office. I paid $9 for that. On that copy okay. stated what I wanted, but I got a call last Thursday stating that I didn't check the boxes. So I had to recheck the boxes. Okay. It was already on the paperwork that I was asking for his annuity. Okay. So, all right. So, so the original judge you, you sent him did yes. have this attachment about wanting his uh, annuity. It was in the comment section, the attachment, nobody said anything about until two days ago when I came up to your office to check the boxes on the paperwork. Okay. The question the court has, when you, you claim you delivered to, to him, you mailed him his proposed judgment of divorce, did it reference and have this attachment that you want his annuity with the boilermakers. Yes. In the comments on the paperwork, it stated that I was requesting his annuity. So, yes, it did. Okay. Because your All right. Perhaps so we, you can testify. You can provide your testimony under oath, uh, Mr. Owens, that you did. Uh, that the, Because you, you simply you have a notice of hearing there that, yeah, you said you mailed him the notice of hearing and... Just the notice of hearing. You didn't say with this that you also sent him the proposed judgment of divorce. You know, this is very specific, very technical. Yes, I filled all that out. I took every copy that this, they gave me at the clerk's Owens, office. You did not, hold on. Mr. Owens, you're, you're pushing the court. Nowhere in your proof of service do you say that you mailed him a copy of the proposed judgment. You said you mailed him a, the notice of hearing. But we can perhaps address that through your testimony this afternoon that you, in fact, mailed him Back in December 20th, copy the three page judgment divorce with the attachment and with the comments that you want as the boilermaker's pension. Yes, that it's was good. in the December 29th. I did okay. mail it. But you're, the document you filed with the court does not specifically reference that. That's the point I'm trying to make, Ms. Owens. Um, okay, now you previously told the court that uh, when we did the initial pretrial, that the only issue was a joint debt on a truck that was titled in your name and up north that you're in your mother's possession. Your judge yes. divorce here says you don't own any vehicles and there's no joint debts. He's only a co-signer on the loan. Okay, it's so a joint debt. So who's going to pay that? You're going to pay that debt? Yes, I am. All right. Then that needs to be set forth, this judgment. So, but, but the vehicle is only in your name, but the, the uh, so you're going to pay off that debt so that uh, uh, it doesn't affect your credit as well, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, there is a vehicle and you want to be awarded that vehicle, correct? And yes. the, you will pay for the debt on it? Yes. All right. So I'm going to modify this judgment and uh, I'm going to white out what you checked and I'll check the appropriate boxes. Okay. I'm going to indicate the box that rather than there's no vehicles that yet each party will keep the vehicle in their possession and pay any debt they're on. Um, and the, what is the year type of that vehicle up north that's uh, told in your name? It's a 2018 Dodge Ram 2500. Yeah, right here, the 2018 Dodge Ram is awarded to the plaintiff, and she shall pay any debt thereon. Correct? Yes. <clears throat> Who is the debt owed to on the Dodge Ram? Directions Credit Union. Okay. All right, so do you have any retirement plans uh, or IRAs, Ms. Owens? I have a 401k. Okay. It just started a couple or four years ago when I was okay. hired in. All right. So with respect to debts, I indicated that uh, the uh, uh, plaintiff, which is you, shall pay the uh, in full the joint debt to Directions Credit Union relative to the 2018 Dodge Ram Title II plaintiff. Agreeable? Agreeable. And further, with respect to motor vehicles, uh, each party's awarded the vehicle according to their possession and name. Specifically, the 2018 Dodge Rams were to the plaintiff. I've been add, I put that language in there. I've initialed, put my initials next to the language I've added. Okay. 
Spousal support. How many that is not awarded? It's forever barred. With respect to retirement plans, it's, and then you simply say, I would like the annuity Michael has with Boy Micro 85 Union. You attach an addendum. Uh, with respect to that, once a judgment divorce has been entered, Mr. Owens, you then need to prepare what's called a qualified domestic relations order. And that's a form that you normally would pay. There, there are lawyers, there are firms that specialize in preparing what's called the Quadro, QDRO. So make note of that. It's a, yep. it's a QDRO, Qualified Restoration Order. That needs to be prepared and mailed to the Boilermakers 85. Okay. They will they will not pay attention to this judgment divorce. You need to prepare a separate order and pursue this judgment divorce. Yes, I've already spoken a, um, with a lawyer on that. Okay. Now, in game page two, this is there's three pages judgment. You say there's only two, but I've marked it real clear. There's three pages. Uh, rest assured, Ms. Owens, this court is doing everything it can to make this uh, possible for you. Um, okay. and, uh, Ms. Owens, is it true that you filed a complaint for divorce, divorce for this court on about September 27, 2023? Yes. Is it further true that on the date you filed the complaint that you've been a resident of the Cayman Row for at least 10 days in the state of Michigan, at least six months? Yes. You can put your hand down, ma'am. Is it further true that you married to Michael Owens on August 21st, 2004, and you separated in July of 2022? Yes. Is it true there's been a breakdown of your marriage relationship to the extent that the obvious match would have been destroyed? There's no reasonable chance of reconciliation. Yes. Were there any children born or adopted during your marriage or are still minors? No. Are you currently pregnant? No. Do you have any questions for the court? No, uh, the last name that was on the second page, will I get my maiden name back? Yes, this provides a year former name of that's restored. So when you get a copy of this judgment, you need to take a copy uh, to the Secretary of State and Social Security. Now, I'm checking the box, plaintiff name, you just had a blank. Name has changed. You didn't indicate plaintiff or defendant. So we want oh. you, you change your name rather than Michael change his name, correct? <laughs> yes. I'm letting you know, ma'am, you have been, you have, uh, the court's been over backwards trying to make this work for you, you because you've, you've not been Check the appropriate boxes, but anyway, the court has checked the box that you as plaintiff, your name can be modified to Coconauer. When you get a copy of judgment, you didn't need to take a copy to Social Security and the Secretary of State to facilitate that. Okay. And, and again, you need to have a quadro prepared. So take a copy of judgment divorce to alert, get that quadro prepared. Okay. Uh, if in fact it still exists, unless Michael, of course, has withdrawn it or taken a loan, who knows? Yeah. Uh, any event, based on the testimony that's been presented, again, the court satisfied Mr. Nolan's has provided been provided sufficient notice. So one, one last thing, Ms. Owens, you're still under oath. Um, okay. The court wants to verify this. On December 29th, 2023, you mailed it to Mr. Owens as last known address of 678 certain documents. And those documents included a notice that you're going to submit to the court to propose default judgment today, correct? Yes. Did you also include with that this proposed judgment that you they asked the court to enter today? Yes. Okay, didn't have all the, the checks box, but you did make reference in that document you, you gave him that you wanted his annuity. Yes. So he's well aware if he would have looked at the documents that you wanted that. All right. Yes. All right, based upon that, the court satisfied Mr. Owens has received sufficient notice of the proceedings today and uh, the default is properly entered. Further, based upon the testimony that's been presented, as well as the complaint filed, the court finds that jurisdiction has been established. The court further finds that there's been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the object of matrimony had been destroyed. There was no reasonable chance of reconciliation. Accordingly, it is ordered by this court that the marriage between the parties be and is thereby dissolved and judgment shall enter, granting a divorce from bonds of matrimony. Good luck to Mr. Owens. The court will mail out a copy to you as well as to Mr. Owens, and that will conclude this matter. Good luck. Thank you very much. You have a great day. You're welcome.